Dan Seifert with MobileBurn.com, and right now I'm taking a look at the Nokia N9. The Nokia N9 was Nokia's flagship device announced earlier this summer, which has since been supplanted by the Lumia 800. However, the N9 features some interesting hardware and software designs that carried over to the Lumia 800. The first thing that you notice on the Nokia N9 would be its 3.9 inch clear black display. This is an AMOLED display that has a curved Gorilla Glass uh, front, gapless uh, display between the panel and the glass itself, and no air. Nokia has also included an anti-glare uh, polarizing effect to it, so the display is very easy to see outdoors and the blacks are very, very deep. It has a FW VGA resolution, so you're looking at 480 by 854 pixels of resolution on the display itself. Below the display, you can see we've got a front-facing camera that can be used for video calls. It's in the lower right-hand corner, which is pretty unique and not too often that you see that on devices. Across from that, which you can't see right now, is a notification light that lights up when you are charging. It is a simple white light there. The display itself melds effortlessly into the unibody polycarbonate body that the Nokia N9 is machined from. Nokia machines a particular phone from a single block of plastic, which it then inlays the electronics into. The result of this is there's no doors, no gaps. The whole thing is a single piece of plastic. The uh, display itself is very nicely constructed and it goes right into the body. Nokia's manufacturing prowess on this really is exemplified and you don't see too many other phones that match this kind of quality with the hardware of the phone itself. The Nokia N9 weighs about 135 grams so it is not the heaviest phone on the market but it does feel solid in your hand. As far as measurements go, it measures from 7.6 millimeters up to 12.1 millimeters at its thickest. Though due to the curved design of the phone itself, it feels much thinner in your hand when you are holding it than one might uh, expect from a 12.1 millimeter phone. As far as the features on the body of the phone go, we've got a speaker down at the bottom which outputs sound and is actually very hard to muffle even if you put your finger over top of it. The left side of the phone is very stark with no actual features or buttons on it, whereas the right side of the phone is home to the power sleep unlock key and the volume rocker. Up top of the phone, you've got a couple of different things. We've got a 3.5mm headphone jack. This door here covers the micro USB charging and syncing port. And next to that is the SIM slot for a micro SIM card. Nokia N9 uses a similar micro SIM to the iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S. If we take a look at the back of the phone, we see a similar stark flat black with no uh, particular adornments save for the camera. The camera is an 8 megapixel unit and it has an f2.2 28mm wide angle lens made by Carl Zeiss. It is capable of recording video at 720p resolution and features autofocus. Above the camera itself is a dual LED flash. As interesting and unique as the hardware on the N9 is, its software is just as interesting itself. It is powered by Nokia's Migo Harmat and uh, operating system and this is the only device that actually runs that particular operating system available on the market. For starters, we've got a unique notification display that is always displayed on the screen. Thanks to Nokia's AMOLED technology on the screens, it does not require very much power. You can see it displays the time and it will also display any notifications that you might have. You can unlock the display in two different ways. You can press the button on the side or if you double tap the screen, it will wake up the lock screen. From there, you can swipe anywhere across the screen to unlock it in any particular direction. Here we see the quick launch keys that launch when you swipe up from the bottom, so it gives you quick access to your phone, messaging, camera, and browser. Also included here is a notification, so if you happen to have a new notification, you can swipe across the screen like so, and it will open the app where the notification is. If we open to the main home screen here, we can see the grid of applications that Nokia has included on the Nokia N9. You've got various sorts of applications for most intents and purposes, and Nokia has preloaded a Facebook and Twitter application for social networking services. If we swipe to the left, we can get a glance at notifications and what Nokia calls a social feed, which will aggregate updates from Twitter and Facebook into one single stream. You also have a convenient weather indicator there. Swiping back to the main applications brings us here, whereas if we swipe across again, we get to look at our open applications. We can look at them in a grid of three across each, or we can pinch and C2 across as well. Animations are very smooth and fast as you can see here and it really is quite an enjoyable experience. From here you have an option to close applications that are open by tapping and holding 
and if you hit the red X in the upper corner, it will close the particular application. Or you do also have an option at the bottom to close all of them. The Mego interface on the Nokia N9 offers a quick look at your notification or status bar at the top by tapping at the top time. You can see your profile, your volume, you're connected to particular networks. If you had any notifications, they would show here, and it also shows your availability on various chat services, which you can then control. Swiping up from a particular application will minimize it, while swiping down will actually close the application, as you can see there. Swiping left or right will always bring you back to your application tray. Nokia offers a number of ways to integrate your social networks and contacts and streams and feeds into the N9 through its accounts menu here. From here you can add things like a Facebook account, a Twitter account, a Skype account, email accounts, and of course a Nokia account as well. These particular accounts will offer contact syncing, calendar syncing, and email syncing. And with Facebook you can also integrate into Facebook and Gmail will integrate into the messaging client. The browser that Nokia has included with the N9 is a WebKit powered browser and it is quite fast and responsive. It features things such as multiple windows and tabs, full HTML5 support, as well as a WebKit rendering engine. Here it's loaded up the mobile version of our site, and then we can have it load up our full website as well. The, website, the web browser works in both portrait and landscape orientations. It features pinch to zoom, as well as double tap to zoom. Playing embedded YouTube videos can be hit or miss though. Sometimes it will play, other times it will open the, into a YouTube web, uh, website as well. Other times it will just say that it can't play at all. And here it's giving us the issue with Adobe Flash Player since the Nokia N9 does not support Flash. The Nokia N9 is powered by a 1 GHz single core processor and it comes with 1 GB of RAM for application usage. You have options of 16GB or 64GB of storage. The 1GB processor is very fast and responsive. As you can see, the interface has very minimal lag. Scrolling is very smooth as well, once applications have loaded up. The 1GB of RAM allowed the user to play many or open many applications at once, as you can see in this example here. Nokia's messaging client is very attractive and is actually very similar to the messaging client found on WebOS to phones and tablets. Features a bubbled threaded inf interface. The Nokia N9 has one of the most impressive on-screen keyboards we have used on a mobile device. It is very fast and responsive and includes audible as well as haptic vibration feedback. The vibration feedback is one of the best that we've seen on a mobile device and we really wish that Nokia would bring it to other devices in the future. Nokia has included an autocorrect function, however it is not as advanced or accurate as f those available on other platforms. Nokia's Mego email client supports many different protocols and formats. You can have multiple accounts set up. In particular here we have a Gmail account and a standard IMAP account through our AIM server. The Gmail account offers your standard Gmail inbox features. However, it also supports pinch to zoom, as you can see here. The email client supports both formatted text with color and, and italics bold and bold. Nokia has included two social networking applications with the N9, that being for Facebook and Twitter. They are pretty basic in their appearance and in their functionality. However, they do allow users to get most everything done that they wish to do with this particular networks. The Twitter application does lack push notifications for mentions and such, which is a little bit of a disappointment. Nokia has also included a number of games with the N9, such as Angry Birds, Galaxy of Fire 2, Need for Speed Shift, and Real Golf 2011. Here's an example of Need for Speed Shift's playback on the N9.
Nokia is including its Maps application as well as its Drive Navigation application with the N9. Drive provides turn-by-turn -turn navigation and directions for free, much like Google Maps navigation does on Android. Many of the little things that Nokia has put into the Migo Harmat and operating system are what make it most enjoyable to use, such as the way that you can set a clock for an alarm by moving concentric circles. The camera interface on the N9 is pretty spartan, however it does a very good job of getting the job done when you want it to. This button over here will open up your various settings. You have different scene modes for automatic, macro, landscape, portrait, night, and sports. You also have various controls over the flash, including a red eye reduction mode. Advanced photographers can play with the white balance settings and the exposure compensation settings, in addition to light sensitivity. The Nokia N9 will store pictures in a 16x9 resolution, however that will cut the resolution down from 8 megapixels to 7. The N9 also includes face detection autofocus, in addition to standard autofocus. Finally, you can use GPS geotagging with your pictures on the N9. The N9 supports tap to focus, and it also has a digital zoom bar up here. Pictures are pretty fast to capture with the N9, as you can see. What's curiously missing is any way to actually use the front-facing camera. It looks like Nokia is just reserving that for video calling duties at, at this time. Here's the pictures that we just recorded, which you can then review by pinch to zoom, and you can share by various means as well. The N9 also includes an auto fix function, which is designed to enhance the photo. Video on the N9 is recorded at 720p resolution, and the N9 will continuously autofocus while recording. In conclusion, the N9 is a very disappointing product, mainly because we won't see any more of it and it will be further development will have been ceased on it. The hardware is extremely impressive and one of the best designed phones that we have seen all year. The screen is very good as well, it provides very punchy colors and very deep blacks with no glare and a curved display which is very unique. Nokia's Migo Harmat and operating system is very interesting as well as it offers a number of concepts that are not shown on other phones. It's unfortunate that Nokia has decided to ditch this particular operating system in favor of Windows Phone 7.5. The Nokia N9 is available in limited markets around the world. You can get it in a cyan, black, magenta, or now white color options. Unfortunately, it is not available in the UK or the US. That's our review of the Nokia N9 smartphone. This is Dan Seifer from Mobileburn.com.